How's it going, everybody? I am back. It has been a minute since we've done a podcast. Um, I think the last episode was with the Boston Guido, but um, we are back. We are on track. You guys are getting podcasts every week from now on. I'm not going to miss it. Um, It's just been a crazy month, crazy month doing festivals and having a blast and getting to meet everybody that listens to the podcast, that follows me on um, social media. And I must say, you guys have heard me talk about uh, Youngstown, Ohio and Pittsburgh and all these places. Boston, Massachusetts is the f- my favorite place I've ever traveled to. It is unfreaking believable. Everybody there was absolutely incredible. The St. Anthony's Feast was the greatest festival I've ever been to in my entire life. I had such a blast. Um, I, like I said, everybody was unbelievably nice. Um, all the vendors there were incredible. Um, the, the, I think the, um, the people from St. Anthony's church put on an unbelievable, an unbelievable event. I was so happy to be part of it. And, um, you'll definitely see me there again, um, next year, got to meet C money. Um, if you, you don't, totally saw him on Instagram, he's hilarious. Um, obviously hung out with the Boston Guido, um, Christian from, uh, Dolce Fumo had dinner at Dolce Fumo was, which is incredible. I should have brought out um, the Boston Guido back on to talk to them more about it. But um, yeah, so festival season's pretty much over. We've got um, actually a surprise one. I'll announce that right now. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably Saturday, um, the 11th tomorrow, um, September 12th. I will be in on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx at the Fedagosto. Um, selling spoons strictly. I, um, we're not going to have t-shirts. there. just strictly selling spoons. Um, should be a freaking blast. So I'm really excited. I've um, seen pictures, heard great things. Everybody knows the, the real little Italy is in Arthur Avenue in the Bronx in New York city, but we're back in New York too, which is fun. And just a quick note on that. Um, tomorrow, if you're listening to this, it's probably September 11th. And I just want to say, um, uh, just like, kind of like, um, yeah, like I like I never forget, you know, September 11th, 20th anniversary. I personally really don't remember it happening. I, I was five at the time, four or five years old. So, um, but you definitely every year see the effects. And um, obviously I've been to ground zero a bunch of times to pay my respects. So obviously we never want to forget about um, the horrible things that happened 20 years ago today. So just say a prayer for um, all those people who um, sacrificed their lives fighting it or um, unfortunately um, unfortunately died in the um, horrible, horrible attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and all them, the other flights that happened. So 20 years is a long time, but um, it's, it's one thing that I think um, brings a lot of people together. Everybody could um, think about what happened then and um, really come together and kind of you appreciate life for what it is. You take it uh, one day at a time and got to be grateful for um every day that you have so on that note let's try to bring it back we're gonna have a guest on in a little bit um who i met in boston so i'll bring her on a little bit she's a singer songwriter i gotta look through instagram to see if anybody actually sent me questions for the podcast but um yes met a ton of freaking awesome people in boston it was great it was fantastic i'm trying to think of anybody Kind of just stands up and crazy. Oh, I've got my scally. If you guys saw that on Instagram, my Boston scally cap. Um, I really felt like a true Bostonian. I really want to go back there and just to hang out with everybody because I feel like I was working because it was so busy. It was the freaking busiest I've ever been. Had both laser engravers going on the spoons, selling t-shirts. Thank God I had my mom and my sister with me. But um, that vlog is coming soon. But I think on Monday, you guys will see the vlog from Pittsburgh. Make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just a quick five-minute vlog on the Pittsburgh trip, how I uh, blew my radiator. Everybody in Pittsburgh called it a radiator. I blew my radiator in my car. My dad fixed it and um, kept on trucking. Got through Pittsburgh, got through Boston, and I just feel so, so happy to just freaking relax. It feels so great. Um, got to go to the beach. It's it's fun being back in New York and back in Queens because it's come close to the beach, close to the city, close to Long Island. I'm like in the middle of everything, but it's not like so hectic. I'll be at San Gennaro um, next weekend too. Really, really excited. I've always wanted to go to San Gennaro. Never been able to go finally get to go this year so if anybody wants to come down and meet up 
um, grab some food. Um, we're going to shoot a ton of content at San Gennaro. I'm so excited. I got some other fun stuff planned for you guys. So make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube channel. I want to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Um, other announcements, the blue Italia shirts, you see that I'm wearing it right on right now. They're dropping today. Well, today's Friday. So you're listening. To, they're dropping yesterday on the wooden spoon uh, Long sleeve blues, metallic gold. They're so shiny. They're so shiny. I love these are like my one of my favorite shirts I've ever made. And we we make these and um, warehouse them in in um, on the wooden spoon and the wooden spoon store. So these aren't being um, printed by a different third um, party. They're all warehoused by me. So we'll ship these out to you guys once you order them. Um, they're $30 on the wooden spoon store. But since you're listening on the sit down, if you use code sit down at checkout, you get 15% off. So that knocks more than $4, I think. <laughs> the price, trying to do that math in my head real quick. $4.50. You get $4.50 off. So yeah. So um, now that I think I'm catching up. Oh. Other festival we're going to be, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio, Columbus Day weekend. It's like bittersweet to do that because it's like, I'm in Columbus, Ohio on Columbus Day weekend. It's, it fits perfectly. Um, Columbus throws a fantastic festival. It's fantastic. It's, it's, it's a really good festival. Um, so I'm excited to be back there, but it's bittersweet because I'd like to go to like the, because I'm in New York City now. I like to go to like um, the Columbus Day Parade, but um, it is what it is. Got to, got to secure the bag, right? Got to secure that bag. And yeah, so um, for everyone listening, just to recap before we bring our guest on, you catch me at the Fedagosto in the Bronx on Arthur Avenue tomorrow, Sunday, September 12th from 12 to 6. Um, catch me at the San Gennaro Festival from mostly on the weekends. I think that's the 16th through the 26th. So you could just follow me on Instagram at the Wooden Spoon Media, see when I'm going to be there. And then Columbus Day, Columbus Day weekend, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I will be in Columbus, Ohio for their fest. I think that's St. John's the Baptist. That's their um, church that they run the festival through. So, um, yeah, so let's bring on our guest. All right, guys, we are back. And we are back with Cassandra Pinatato. She just released her latest single, and it's available to listen everywhere, right? Yes, indeed. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, I was saying how I met so many great people in Boston and you are definitely one of them. So thank you. It was thank great you. meeting you and it's awesome to connect with somebody around like the same age. It's same that shares same the same values, especially for our Italian culture. So that's awesome to see. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. I got my uh, gnocchi t-shirt yes. and I was ready to go rocking and rolling with the uh, wooden spoon media. That was a great yeah, so every, for everyone that doesn't know, you give like, a, I guess, a little short run on who you are and exactly like what you do, your music, all that fun stuff. Absolutely. So uh, my name is Cassandra. I'm currently located in Boston um, as a opera singer slash opera student at the New England Conservatory. Uh, but I also am a pop singer releasing pop music and I record out of Nashville. So kind of up and down the East Coast right now. Um, but a lot of what I do centers around the ideals of self-actualization and finding like real relationships with people to just become an overall healthier, happier person. So my music revolves around that. A lot of my social media channels revolve around that as well. Um, along with also, of course, you know, promoting my own music and everything. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, and I'm an Italian American singer. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So today. awesome. So awesome. awesome. Yeah. So when did you first, like, I guess, like all the way back, like get into music or like realize like, oh, I've got a really, because your voice is absolutely incredible, by the way. I just listened to the new song yeah, and some of your old you. stuff. Yeah. So when oh, did you like, you. when did you realize like, wow, I have a, I have a good voice and maybe this is something that I want to do with my life. Thank you. Um, honestly, I think, I don't know if I've ever necessarily realized that I had a good voice. I appreciate that though. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always reaching to become uh, better and hoping that people are gonna like what I put out into the world. But I would say when I was probably seven years old was when I really started to do more things like you know the little plays at school or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom actually had a fabulous voice when she was younger. Opera companies looked at her. She was amazing. 
um, but she never followed it. And so when she heard that I could carry a tune, carry a melody, she was like, I want to check this out. So <laughs> she would always have me listen to like the sound of music in the house and that was what I would like other girls would listen to Hannah Montana and I was told that I had to listen to the sound of music so that I trained my voice to be like a, a legit classical voice first um, and she kind of self-trained me until I was about 11 and then I started taking lessons and as time went on um, I actually did not start doing pop music until this past year oh, wow. uh, part of that was because I really wanted to build my technique um, for opera technique it's much different than any other type of singing but I really believe it gives you a base that allows you to just kind of expand on a level that might be harder or take longer to do if you didn't have that base technique. Um, so I studied that and then it just kind of made sense to go to school for opera. Um, and I kept doing that until COVID wiped us all out, <laughs> brought us all home. And I was sitting in my house and started thinking about what do I really want to do and wake up every single day and do. And it's like, I really love opera, but I listen to pop music 24 seven. Mm -hmm makes me feel alive. I feel like I could tell more of my own personal life story, which I definitely talk a lot. So I certainly have a lot to say. There's a lot more <laughs> songs coming. <laughs> and yeah, I just kind of took off that way. And that's a little story of how uh, singing happened. But I've kind of been in music my whole life. So cool. So cool. So shout out to your mom. <laughs> my mom is my number one fan. All the way, my parents just moved to Florida at the start of the pandemic. And right before my song dropped, they sent me a cake to say congrats. Like, they're Aww. the sweetest people in the world. I love my family, my brother, too. Um, yeah, it's a really, really close so family. Cool, so cool. Yeah, I know, like, it could, I mean, growing up in, like, the sports world and, like, I'm actually, like, I don't know if, if I've ever even said this on air, but, like, I'm a wrestling coach, too. So I've seen, like, parents push. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, like, a <laughs> fun, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, so I see parents like really push kids sometimes and it's like, whoa, hold, hold off. So has your mom like been like, like a, like, what was like her temperament with it? Like how like, like involved was she? <laughs> so my parents, um, you know, I definitely have like the Italian mama, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like mama bear comes in and she knows what is going on. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is my parents were always really careful not to be overbearing in that regard. Like they were there for us for everything. Me and my brother have honestly like the best childhood we could have asked for because my parents were so supportive um, and they were really involved and yet kind of their quote is always like, we'll feed the passion. So like if I wake up every single day and I am grinding, I'm working, I'm doing these things because I love it awesome. They're like, I will get you a lesson. I will take you here. I will do that. And I'll encourage you to go be better and be the best you can be. But if I wake up and I'm like, eh, then that's the day that they're like, all right, just don't do that anymore. Then mm -hmm. like I used to be a um, nationally ranked tennis player and I used wow. to do tournaments all around the like Northeast and everything else. Um, I was getting recruited by D1 colleges and I just woke up one day and said, I really love tennis a little bit worried about how it's going to affect my singing career if I try to do both this and singing in college, especially because I was also trying to do um, biochemistry as well. Yeah, that's a lot on your plate. Freshman year was very busy. <laughs> <laughs> but they just looked at me and they were like, all right, I would love for you to keep playing tennis, but you know, we just want to feed the passion. If the passion is singing, we think you're doing a great job. Um, you know, it's kind of, I was telling this actually to a professor of mine the other day, like, a lot of parents, when they hear my kid wants to go into music, you know, freak out like, oh, yeah. good God, not that, right? Um, but I was talking to my parents a little while ago, um, kind of at the start of the pandemic. I said, I've always done medicine and everything else. And as much as I enjoy it, I feel alive when I do music. So I think that I really want to buckle down and do that. Like, I want to yeah. dive in. I've done my medical research. It's behind me. It's published. It's great. But like, this is what I want to do. I thought for sure there was going to be kind of a, you know, arm wrestle to, mm -hmm. and they just were like, you sure? And I was like, yeah. Went, okay. <laughs> so how are we going to start it up? Let's open an LLC. Let's do this thing. Like if you're yeah. going to make pop music, you're going to do it right. Um, and I think that really speaks to how my parents were involved. It's uh, like a deep rooted family trust. And I yeah. think that's really special. We're going to have to have your parents on the podcast for like a parenting podcast. Cause they seem, oh my gosh. Uh, they seem great. <laughs> They're so great. They're a little camera shy, so I'll see if I can get them. That would be <laughs> no, yeah, but that's, 
I definitely had like a similar like upbringing where it's like, um, one, if you start something, you better finish it. And then two, if you're going to do something, you do it right or you don't do it at all. So those are like the two like main lessons that like that I was brought up with. So it was like similar. So if I like wanted to stop something, it's like, you're going to finish out whatever you've committed to. And then afterwards, then we'll take it from there. Right, 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 right. Exactly. I feel like a lot of it though comes from ancestors. I don't know about you, but like my family, when they immigrated in from Italy, it was that way, right? Like mm-hmm. if you start something, you better finish it because it's, you know, do or die. Like, you know, you're an Italian yeah. immigrating in the United States and you got to make it. Um, and my, especially on my mom's side, there's like so much influence from that in our everyday lives. And I think that's really, really special. It's taught us a lot about family and trust, but also hard work and like growing and reaching for what you really want. Yeah, absolutely. It's always like, um, like growing up, like those old school values. It's like your word is like everything and like, yeah, whatever, like, like you're only as good as your word, like handshake. It means like, it's just good as a, it's a strong, like everything, like kind of old school mentality, but it's cool to see, like, it's not just me or just like my family that does. It's obviously more than, um, more than that. So it's cool to see that and also spread that message. I think that's important too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you ever put like anything like that about your family and your music or have you like done any, like, like written anything like about like family life or anything like that? A little bit. So it's, I think a lot of times I'll write songs that I don't necessarily put out, right? Like my catalog of songs is much bigger than what's on Spotify right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the number one thing is I don't necessarily reference directly my family within a song, um, but the influence of my family is always within them, right? Like I, I have so many songs that are, for lack of a better term, it's kind of this, you know, disruptor of the pop industry vibe, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm coming in and I'm, I'm bashing hookup culture, which is super popular right now. I'm bashing, um, you know, whatever. I, I feel like all my songs, they have some sort of mildly controversial statement that come back to a deep rooted value that my parents instilled within me about like knowing your worth, knowing what you want and not settling for less than that. Right. So I think every single time I write a song, um, we always, we joke about my parents are the label. That's what me and all my songwriters always say. We're like, does it pass the label test? And so I'll have to bring every single song to my parents and be like, hey, mom and dad, I want to sing about this today. Um, And that definitely, uh, I find that my songs sometimes cater to like a specific way of wording certain things because I know my mom and dad are going to be blasting that in the house and I don't want (laughs) to comfy topics being spoken about um but yeah I would say they have a heavy influence in terms of songs that are straight up about them I definitely think I've written some songs that if you looked at it from two different angles Mm. um it could be about that but I don't know we'll see maybe that'll be the next one yeah so speak on like you like the contra the controversy in some of your music like bashing hookup culture and everything like that speak on that a little bit where does where does that all kind of like root like stem from yeah, absolutely so for me this i really i take this always back to my song um drinking games mm-hmm. and that whole song is it starts out with i can almost smell the whiskey on your breath staring at that midnight two-word text um and the whole premise of this is like people all the time, it's like a college culture thing now that has been widely accepted as normal. Um, we'll drunk text at like, you know, the 2 a.m., hey, you up, and try to, you know, come over, right? And that's fine. My thing about hookup culture is that I don't bash hookup culture in the sense of like, oh, people shouldn't do that. Do whatever you want to do. But don't, like, understand at face value that a real relationship versus a hookup will never give you the same fulfillment. Those are like two very separate things. Um, and I feel like for me, something that's come to mind a bunch is like this idea of self-actualizing, wanting real relationships, wanting healthy, whole relationships in my life, whether that's friendships or with like a romantic relationship. And when you look at something like cookup culture, I feel like it's stunting your ability to pass that threshold of a deeper connection with somebody. Because um, you can't. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody always wants to be like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt. But like somebody gets attached. Right. Like if it's Mm -hmm. if it's a continuous thing, somebody's going to get attached and somebody is going to get hurt. 
Um, and there's just so many sides to that coin as well as if you're down for that, do it. But if you're not down for that, don't settle for it because you're afraid to like not get the guy or girl or whatever. You know what I mean? Like stand up for what Mm -hmm. you want. And that's what really matters. Um, same thing. I just dropped that song handle this in July. And the whole song is essentially just saying like, this is me. If you don't like it, you're not going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know what I mean? And don't try to change somebody else to fit the mold of what you want. Um, it's definitely very confident, very. Yeah, uh, no, no, that's the one I was just li- I was just uh, listening to. That's one. It's really catchy for like the chorus. Thank that's you. great, <laughs> but no, that's a that's a good because mo- you don't really hear that like being said. Like you, you almost hear like like a confident like female voices because there's there's plenty of them now. But like saying something like on that. Like saying like a similar thing, but like a like a way better way of going about it. It's like knowing your worth than finding someone that matches that instead of like putting other people down or. Right. I, I guess right. like I I don't really, I, I'm not saying like what I think. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you hear like all of it, and it's like um, for lack of a better word, a lot of Putana saying it. <laughs> but, <laughs> in like yeah. that way of going about it, but yours is a very very classy and um a very classy way of putting it and a very strong, I think much stronger way of putting it because you're taking the high ground and being like, yeah, like taking the high ground and saying it and, and very like actually empowering somebody instead of doing it the other way. So it's very admirable. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I feel like as uh, my mission as an artist at the end of the day is just to empower people. And that sounds kind of cliche or like, oh, well, you would hope so, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a lot of music out there right now that is more wallowing in a certain emotion, right? And that certainly can heal people. I really believe that music can help heal or hurt anybody. And I think one song can do all three for one person or for each different people. Um, But I really, really think that having somebody in the pop industry, like I always say on my social media platforms, I want to be the artist that I needed when I was a little girl, right? Like, I love the artists that I listened to at 13, but none of them were necessarily full-blown saying, you know, if you can't handle this, then, you know, you'll never handle me, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of compass of, I'm not going to change myself for anybody. I'm not going to, you know, I guess Selena Gomez did say I wouldn't want to be anybody else, but Mm -hmm. other (laughs) other than her... Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's going to be a really fun journey to embark on as I try to find more listeners, more people that like this message of self-actualization and empowerment. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Awesome. Well, obviously like you're getting your message out on social media. You've got a, you got a pretty good TikTok following too. So thank you. Thank you. We're close to 13 K working. Awesome. Well, Well, hopefully maybe we'll get you there after this. Everybody it's, you know, Cassandra on all the social medias, right? You know, Cassandra, why are you? K-N-O-W. Yeah, so everybody listen and go check out the TikTok right now. Get her to 13K. <laughs> oh, 13K. You got no, a lot but... of content coming out with this next song. Yeah, oh, I'm excited. I know TikTok's, TikTok's the way to do it. You get one song, one trend to go viral with your sound, and you're the next, I don't know, how many TikTok, how many freaking artists have been discovered on TikTok so far since 2019? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I feel like I missed part of the train of artists that kind of blew up on TikTok. I feel like it came in just after the hub of when a whole bunch of people were mm-hmm. uh, blowing up, but I still have hope. Yeah. Something's going to pop eventually. It has to. Just keep chipping track. away. Right on. Right on. <laughs> keep live streaming too. Oh my gosh. I love live streaming on TikTok. I think I know. I know. I liked before everyone could do it. I was like, I would go on TikTok and we would, I would like, cause I have this giant whiteboard in my room. Oh really? And so like, I remember when live stream first became a thing, we used to do it with a, a buddy of mine who had just like, he had a couple thousand followers on Instagram, which for, for my little hometown, that was a ton. So we would go and we played hangman, like on a dry erase board. So I was like, Oh, okay. Let's just go just play stupid games and stuff on live stream. So right. I would do that like all the time. And it was a freaking blast doing that. That's awesome. And then like, I don't know, like you get, TikTok, you get shadow banned on TikTok, whatever. I think I get shadow banned, whatever. But I was like just cooking on live stream yesterday and it was fun. Right. What'd you cook? Um, steak tacos. Ooh, that sounds good. 
Mm-hmm. I know nothing, nothing Italian, but, <laughs> but it's yeah. funny. It's like, cause you never know what's going to happen. Like I cut it, I cut into an onion and like the entire inside was like rotted. I was like, Oh, what the fuck? And I just threw, yeah. <laughs> threw it out. So I'm sure yeah, yeah. like the people that are watching yeah. me on live stream got a laugh out of that. I was on live stream cooking the other day and I threw a bunch of onions into a pan of hot oil. Oh, jeez. This oil <laughs> spattered, like I have never seen oil spatter before. And of course, it's while I'm on live stream, yep. my hand yep. like toasted down the <laughs> side as I'm sitting there running around my kitchen looking for cold water. Oh, God. But very fun, though. I have to say cooking on live stream. I always like sing and cook on live stream and then talk about oh, all the topics of empowerment. It's a lot of fun. Get like a good group of people in there. Yeah, we should, you should start a pot, an empowerment podcast. Oh my gosh, that'd be fun. Honestly, I think I would love to be a podcaster. So maybe when I get out of my undergrad and have like- Yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely takes a lot of time out, but um, you definitely have like the personality for it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I mean, going back to your music, what certain artists like did you listen to like growing up or do you, or who, who, who do you still listen to now? Like, where do you get inspiration from? Sure, so- I definitely listen to a lot of what I do, right? Like I listen to the top 40 hits because I'm trying to write music that hopefully maybe eventually will end up there. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa. Um, I really like what Dua Lipa's doing. Her whole like female alpha deal of this just like, she knows what she wants. She's not holding back. She's mm -hmm. going to tell you how it is. Um, that's super dope. Like I really, really like how she does all that. But um yeah, so she was great. I've always listened to Ariana Grande, huge Arianator. Um, loved <laughs> Jerry J. I, um, I'm trying to think of, so I always listen to like Christina Aguilera. I was going to say, I like almost heard like a little bit of Christina Aguilera in your voice. Like that, like, like strong, so like. Thank you. Ah, she's so good. I, oh my gosh, she's so good. Like that song, um, Fighter, it's so well known, but I remember watching a video she does in those like uh, online master classes. I always see him scrolling on Instagram. Mm -hmm. so you can take this master class. Um, and she always talks about how, like, just throw it away. Like, stop trying to make it pretty. Stop trying to make it cute or sweet or like control the note. Just like, <clears throat> give it to me. Like, give me the growl. Give me the power. And I remember I saw that one day and I was like, could I growl? Is that allowed? Like, am I, <laughs> can I do that? Uh, especially because I'm a coloratura soprano. Like in the classical world, I sound like a little whistly bird. And I think my Instagram bio is um, I have the vocal range of a squeaky toy. Because that's literally what I do. My voice just goes super, super high and super fast. And that's everything I do in the classical world. And it's. Can we get cool. a preview? A little preview? Oh, God. Not at this hour of the. No. Maybe. We'll, we'll do another. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a little. It's going to blow out the speakers. I just got That'd a backup. be funny. Where am I? I feel like. That is German, but it is. <laughs> That's a little, a mini run from one of the pieces that I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. Thank you. Not that, because I know it sucks getting put on the spot like that, but. Oh, no. It's okay. It so I just cool. I wish I warmed up. I didn't even think about it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so like I had that, right? Like I do that kind of stuff. It's very like a little bird chirping at you. And then I started doing pop music and I'm like, is that fine? I can just kind of. <clears throat> and then you hear at the end of a song like Handle This or like Drinking Games, there's so much of that like, no, no. And it's forward it's there it's growly and i just had to wake up one day and go i don't care how it sounds i just want to show how i feel and that's when i actually started creating as opposed to just like singing the songs that mm -hmm. i was writing you know that's awesome i actually i like that same message goes through i think a lot of different art forms whether it's like either like even like comedy or writing or just like even like graphic design it's like everyone like stop trying to make it perfect put out what you like to put out and then um call it at that right right well it's like even the song that i dropped today um we initially had this idea for it to be almost like punk poppy 
um, just because we thought that would be closer to this extreme confidence vibe, right? Like everything's been so growly aggressive. And I sat down with this song one day and I was like, you know what, this healed so much because it stems from a time of so much pain. I was like, I can't make this some hardcore punk pop song. It's gotta be something more real. And so I sat down at a piano one day and I started playing out the chords and I started harmonizing them. And if you hear in the beginning, you'll hear like a, ah, ah, oh, oh. and you'll hear that. And then I stacked that out. I did another stack underneath it. We did all these different sound effects to make it almost sound like it's underwater. And the little baby in the head, oh. all of it together. I just, I woke up one day and it was like a brainchild occurred. And I said, that's real. That's what needs to go out into the world. Not punk pop, not anything else, nothing growly. It just needs to be what it is. Um, it's very exciting. I'm very that's excited. so cool to hear. I can't even imagine like writing a song. Like there's, I feel like there's just so much that goes into it and to like make it like, even just like, just for, like from an outsider looking to like make something sound good. Like what like chords to put together or just like, sure. It's just, it's just so much work for someone that like doesn't and like for you to do that. And then like for yourself too, on top of it, just like, that's, that's pretty incredible. So definitely kudos to you. And the song's great, by the way, I listened to it again today. Yes. I'm so yeah. glad. Thank you. So if you want, like <laughs> speak on like the origin of this song, it's called Meanwhile in My Head, right? Yes. And Meanwhile in My Head. So this one was a lot of fun to write. Um, Basically, I walked into my songwriting crew one day and I was like, all right, let's write. And we were throwing around different ideas. And one of them said, you know, what about this idea of like, meanwhile, in my head, like, is one thing's happening, another thing's happening. I don't know what that would be. Like, you, Cass, need to tell me what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. I was like, all right, let me think on a time that I thought one thing was happening. And in fact, another may or may not have been. Um, and it brought me back to this time that I, I feel like a lot of people have had this happen before where my now ex-boyfriend was totally being shady. Like something was up, I could feel it. I didn't know what was up, but something didn't quite feel right. Um, and he had like a childhood best friend, you know, no nuisance forever. And it was always a little things like, you know, she'd laugh a little too much at his joke and like, you know, mm -hmm. pat his arm as he said something or what, I just see the way that she looked at him and yet they would hang out sometimes alone. I'm like, hmm, yeah, that's what I said. I said, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know what? To this day, I have no idea if anything happened. Like, he was a nice guy. So I honestly, still to this day, would be shocked. Um, but I remember sitting in my room, upset as could be, just sitting there, like, spinning in this idea within my head of, like, is he not answering me because he's asleep? Is he with his guy friends? Or is he with this girl? And what's going on? What am I going to do about that? Like, do you, you know, and you're so um, in love with the person that to just walk away takes a lot of strength and courage that I at the time didn't have to just get up and walk away and be like, well, obviously trust is broken, done. Mm -hmm. um, I just tried to stick it out. And I drove myself kind of nuts not gonna lie I was definitely an annoying girlfriend because of it I will I will admit that um, <laughs> but it was also a very real emotion for me I um I keep putting out this statement of like you have me somewhere between loved and betrayed and that's really what it was it was like I felt that everything was perfect when I was with this person um and then as soon as we were apart I felt like everything in the world could be going wrong um, and so the whole song, if you really listen, like put on a good set of headphones and just let it all happen. I worked with the audio engineer to actually take the panning. They call it panning. It's like, um, you know the song, What You Say by Jason Derulo? Yep. You ever listen to it with headphones and it goes like, whoa, 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 yeah. do you say? Yeah, okay. So that's panning. And that's basically you go one ear to the other. You can shift out where the sounds are. Okay. And so the entire song... I worked it so that it literally swims through your head and you feel it like shifting around within uh. your skull. The song will literally move. Um, so that was a lot of fun to work with. And part of it was is 
I want to give the listener kind of the full visual and emotional experience of sitting in your room, in your bed, on your phone, starting to worry, starting to worry a little bit more, absolutely meltdown crying, freaking out, oh my gosh, something could be totally wrong, and then pulling yourself together and being like, it's probably fine. I hope you, you, know, you say it's in my head. I hope it's in my head. Mm-hmm. Just take a deep breath and go back out. And it was, to me, like I had, unfortunately, that scenario happened way too many times in that relationship. Um, but it was like a mental roadmap of all of that. And I really hope the song can, you know, convey that. Um, but the headphones help it. Okay. Uh, Everybody it. better listen with headphones. Good headphones, like get your best ones and crank it. We um we even did a whole. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We sat in the studio. Um, it was like our seventeenth hour of recording in three days. Uh, because I would just go into Nashville wow. for a weekend, so it's insane hours of recording. And it was like our seventeenth hour, and I looked at my producer and I was like, Scott, I think we need to do an ASMR track on this. <laughs> he was like, Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> he was like, Hear me out. Just run the track, and I'm gonna do it. You'll hear throughout the entire track, like the breaths that happen. The I was crying in the studio at times while I was recording it, because and just having like shaky breaths happen throughout it, and they all found their place within the track, and it was oh, that's so cool. So, so you gotta listen with them, headphones in, and you'll hear it. It's like my little brainchild, and I am yeah, I'm just really excited about it. I know it's so. like one thing for someone to listen to something like a like a song, but like to have that many hours and that many like little details in it. Like that's, that makes it so much cooler, at least to me. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to do this one. A lot of fun. Oh my gosh. We recorded this. Um, I think we probably started writing it in March, recorded it in May, looked at it again in August and shipped it out mid to late August. Um, and it was just so much work and work and work and work and work trying to make it all happen so it's finally are we gonna get a music video to this maybe one day i would absolutely love that i am currently working on trying to find a way to make that happen um just gotta find like the right stylist right videographer everything Mm -hmm. up here get a good good deal going so for sure well if anybody knows reach out (laughs) i'm in boston Probably a lyrics music video soon though. That's for sure. That's cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, well, first off, everyone stop what you're doing now. Go listen to the song. It's going to be in the description of wherever you're um, listening to the podcast or watching the podcast. Go follow Cassie at, at, you know, Cassie or Cassandra. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm messing up. And then, okay. um, yeah. So make sure you follow Cassandra everywhere. Go listen to the song, leave her reviews, everything like that. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank it was so great having- meeting you. You as well. Thank you so much for having me. This so, is awesome. We'll, we'll circle back and do another podcast because I'm sure we could talk about so much more. And Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I'll be up in Boston and we could do one in person. There we go. Get a little content series, which I actually, we have to chat because I have an idea for a content series we could do if you were in the area. Okay. Awesome. We'll stay on after we after I stop recording. <laughs> after I stop recording. But everybody else... Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Sit Down. Be sure to like, subscribe, wherever you're listening to. And start shopping for Christmas at thewoodenspoonstore.com. Um, it's going to be here before you know it. Get your wooden spoons, your new Italia shirts, Dominic the donkey hoodies, whatever you guys need. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Ciao.